Greetings everyone, it's Alexor again. I'm here with yet another build. This one is absolutely insane though. Because it's the most right click build I've ever seen. And look at my ward, my health basically. 18,000, 70,000 together with my health about 19,000. We're getting up to 20 now. And it's also at the same time while doing this. An AOE homing missile divine bolt shooting bolt thing, bolt everything. So this thing can easily go to very high corruption. Very easily. Just one thing you have to do all the time. And I'm gonna show you later what it is. Actually, I can show you right now. Because you will have to keep clicking the right button down. You don't have to click it all the time, just keep it down. That's what you have to do, really, all the time. If you stop it, especially in higher corruption or in tier four dungeons, you die fast because see, my health goes down very fast, very fast. The wall retention is not that crazy. And then you're sitting at like what goes down to about thousand ish health overall, health and ward about a thousand. And then you get one shot by virtually everything. So what you have to do is you keep casting. Healing hands, this is right click. You see the ward goes up very fast, we're already at 10k. You can also cast your Citrus of Hope, they give you uh, more buffs. And then only when you have this ready, around like that, then you cast or run towards people with your lunge. Then you can just keep right clicking. Oh, this was already the whole echo, I didn't realize that. That was fast. <laughs> that was very fast. And... Yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do. But if you don't keep right clicking, especially against bosses, uh, then you die very fast. That's a problem with this build. So, what does this build actually do? Or how does it work rather? Uh, nope, that's the pass. It's actually very simple. This is sort of the cast a Dean kind of thing. So let's first check the skills. So the main thing is what you want to have is healing hands, of course. And one key thing which is pretty much the whole like this build is bugged okay this is broken this is not intended to work this way this, i have seen this build going to 2k corruption people have said it before this build is not intended to do that by the devs so this will be changed all right word of advice here this will most likely be changed in the next cycle 1.1 so you have about two more months to actually farm your high corruption with this build if you want to do it uh, if you want to have a less Bug reliant build. Check out my other melee healing hands paladin build. This also works very well. This one is the caster version. And this is stronger right now, but will most likely go to shit later. And it all comes down to this note Divine Barrier. The sets healing hands also grants ward to allies based on your attunement. Now it says allies, but it also works on you. And that is the key thing why this is so powerful. Right? If I go here and I just right click. 10k with health, 12,000, 14,000, 15,000. This thing is just, and this is not intended to work that way, right? You can't tell me that this is the intention of this character or this this um, spell skill to work that way, especially not with this node. Also because it says to allies and not to you and allies, because usually if it gives a buff to you and allies in this tree, it says you and allies. So I guess this will be changed. Anyway, this is what you need, right? This is what creates your health. This one uh, is really just for convenience. If you not target an ally with it or anyone really, then it's auto cast it on yourself. That just makes it easier to just run around and just kick, uh, click right somewhere. It doesn't really matter that much. Everything else is very simple. Searing light, um, you have more damage. And you have, actually, I don't know why this isn't actually maxed out to five. I fucked up. This should be five or five. You want to have all the divine bolts. It just means they, these bolts you see, they spread more to enemies, right? Across the screen, not even on-screen enemies are killed with that, etc. Very, very simple. Everything else is really just healing. Like, oh, mana cost reduce, reduction, okay. Healing effectiveness. Healing effectiveness, or upfront healing, rather, and additional healing effectiveness. Because healing effectiveness is, of course, what gives you more ward and what scales you build. In the ward department. So there's one or two ways you can go with this build. One is more tanky, even more tanky, but you lose damage, or you go more on damage. 
and you lose a little bit of tankiness. I could easily bring this up to 25k uh, ward, no problem. But depends on what you want to play with, and you do this with the items, we get to that later. So that's your healing, and that's really the only thing you really need. The others are cool additions, but most of the times you don't really need that. <laughs> so, And this is saying also a lot about the build being bugged, because you really don't need the other ones. But let's go through them anyway. Holy Aura is very simple. More fire damage, because we scale with fire damage, right? Attack speed, cast speed. Cast speed is key, of course. Health regen, and uh, that's not it. This one. Healing effectiveness. Even more healing effectiveness when you have your aura on, so you farm up uh, ward even more. This is resistances. Simple. Switches of hope. Also, uh, healing effectiveness when the active damage over time. No, damage for you and your allies. This one is a key uh, thing you want to have. Chance to summon a switcher when you kill an enemy, so you don't have to cast them yourself all the time. Like in battle, they're auto cast, so you have the buff all the time. Fire damage, uh, they last longer, and you have one more. Uh, in the root threshold, etc. So it's healing and damage. Very simple. And we have our lunge, that's our mobility skill. And you wanna, especially, like I go for this down here. That gives frailty to enemies, which I like a lot. And the chance is 240%, so it's kind of crazy. I mean, traveled, um, um, depending on the distance, traveled up to the enemy. So you want to lunge from as far as possible to the enemy. That gives you the most buffs. And frailty is, of course, great. Reduces damage dealt by 6%. Uh, that's very great against bosses, especially. And you need this. So you have a double charge, so you can lunge twice. But you can only lunge to enemies, right? So you can't just blink around. It has to be an enemy. But this is sort of your, your mobility skill. And down here, of course, if a... Lunge kills an enemy, like weaker mobs, for example. You get you kill them right away, but you also get here a frenzy duration. It's pretty nice because that gives you 20% increased attack and cast speed, so you can shoot these bolts even faster. But you want to have this. Oh, this is what I'm doing. Some people play with the volatile reversal. I kind of like this. Lunge final hit has a chance to cast smite. This should also be at 4 4. I guess it's because I changed my items, so it went down. So you want to max this out, so you have 100% chance to cast Smite whenever you lunge at someone. And then Smite, what Smite does is over here, Ignite, and Spreading Flames, Explosion, and it also has a Fissure underneath them, more Fire Damage, Fire Damage, Fire Damage. You can also go with Blind if you want, if you want to have more ailments. I was actually thinking about this, it might be better. And it also has... Yeah, you can also heal in an area around you, uh, re reduce aimments, etc. But you want to go for mostly fire damage and ignite, ignite chance, because this then automatically ignites the enemy and set them to fire and even explode sometimes, and you just keep casting your bolts, which also do fire damage, and then you do more fire damage to ignited enemies. That's the whole synergy between the smite. Again, some people run out of skills. Um, for example, the Volatile Reversal, which sets you back two seconds, reverting your health and mana since then. I don't didn't like this too much, but that's up to you. You can also play with other skills. As I said, you really don't need this. Really, this the only skill you really need is Healing Hands, because you're just going to keep right-clicking. It's very simple. That, that's it for the skills already. And that's also why it's broken, because you don't need any synergies very much, and that's all you do. So how would you play that? I mean, I showed it already. Uh, you keep just right-clicking, that kicks the enemies, and then you can also, every now and then, hit W, in this case, to activate your aura, which makes you cast even faster and give you more damage. That's it. You can also cast Smite on the enemy, like bosses, for example. Because if you fight a boss, you're not really lunging at them, you're face-tanking them all the time, right? You're literally face-tanking them all the time. But then sometimes you're gonna just cast Smite on them to get the buff from it, right? The Ignite Chance and the buffs. Same with uh, Holy Aura, you just keep casting it. Sometimes you want to also move away from the boss, reapply your switches of hope yourself, because they also don't get auto proc because they only proc when you kill an enemy, which you don't do if you fight a boss for a few minutes. So when, once they run off, you cast them, and you just lunge at the boss again. That's it. Passives, very simple. I mean, the Paladin passive um, base Sentinel wants is pretty much always the same. Some go for the melee, uh, quatch, sorry, uh, the Vitality. I really like the strength and the resistance is better. Personally, then you go with damage and stun avoidance, uh, armor and less damage taken, and then you are at 20. Very simple. P 
Paladin. Key thing you want to have, I mean, these are obvious. You have uh, fire damage and attunement. Attunement also scales your damage. Why do I have this? Also, I just realized uh, this is still my melee passive tree mostly, but so you can ignore these two. Don't go for these because we don't do any melee damage. This is bullshit. Um, you want to go for this. Healing effectiveness, attunement, mana region. You don't really need mana region, but attunement scales your damage. Uh, spell crit chance, so your divine bolts actually crit. Uh, yeah, Divine Essence. This is interesting. This lasts for 10 seconds. When you heal yourself on ally, you are granted the chance for Divine Essence. That gives you even more armor and healing effectiveness. It also reduces stun duration. But the key thing is this thing. While you have three or more Divine Essences, if you would die, you have a 10% chance to instead consume all the essences and be returned to life at full health. So this can be what keeps you alive against the boss with a huge blow. Even though you're still at 20k health, so you probably... Don't need it, but whatever. Other than that, you just go with these two maxed out. Damage, health, healing, effectiveness, and mana. Fire damage. Move speed, I mean, fine. But fire damage does it. Everything else you don't really need. Um, you can, if you want to go, you can always go for the healing effectiveness, stun avoidances. You can also go, where was it? You can then also go a little bit into the Void Knight. Health and resistances later to make it even tankier. Or the Forge Guard also, I believe, has... Damages or block effectiveness. So you can play around with this a little bit. I'm gonna post the description below, of course, the build planner where I max this out to 100 because this character isn't at 100. So you can see this. But passives are very simple. You just go for healing effectiveness all the time, everywhere. That makes you tanky and fire damage. Healing effectiveness and fire damage is what scales your build. Very easy. Now for the items. Oh god, there's so many. So. The key thing, again, what makes this even possible at all is Exanctionus. Again, we Exanctionus is so good, we even use it on a Paladin, which makes no sense law-wise or in any sense, but, you know, that's what it is. And by the way, this is all uniques, you don't need all of them, but if you want to go for High Corruption, then you need all the uniques. Um, just going to show it here, because it makes it easier. Because this eats your health. So you can, if you cast this, it also shoots the bolts. Because the Divine Bolts, by the way, if you don't know how much damage they're doing, you go to your Healing Hands, you go here and you click Alt. That shows you Divine Bolt. Currently 8,000 damage. This scales with Fire, Spell and Attunement. So Attunement up, Fire damage up, Spell damage up. These do more damage. And these are the five things that shoot out in homing, homing missile at enemies. And these only are shot if you heal yourself and you are not full health. Okay, so you have to be not full health most of the time, and Exanctionist secures that. Because it constantly eats your health, 20% current health loss per second. And then you heal yourself up, as you can tell. But you never really go to 100 because it eats it way faster. So you can constantly cast these Divine Bolts, no problem. Peak of the Mountain is a very easy one, that just gives you a crit chance. So I think the really the... I think the unique you should have is this one. And this one. These two you should have anyway. This one is easy to get, really. You should have it if you play a little. Exanction is you gotta farm. You, you gotta have it. I'm very sorry, but you gotta have it. This one you should have. And tell you in a second what they do. The other ones not necessary. In this case, with the other ones, with the items really go for fire damage, okay? It's all fire damage everywhere or crit. That's what you do. Uh, the healing effectiveness is done with your passive tree, and the fire damage is done with the items. So this one, the Mad Alchemist Slayer, you get this from Exalt Mages, I believe. Exalt Mages, not Exalted Mages. And the great thing about this is Frailty on Spell Hit, Slow on Spell Hit, Shred Armor on Spell Hit, Electrify on Spell Hit, Poison on Spell Hit. Increase cast speed per 2 intelligence, which we have a lot of, so even faster. 1 mana gain or potion use, that's irrelevant. Spell damage mana, spell mana cost. But this is just because we are cast the Paladin now, we never attack directly, we just cast. And this has all the great elements. I tried this, the Cinder Song. It's not bad because it gives you a lot of fire damage and spell fire damage and plus one to fire spells. But in my testing, the Frailty especially was much more helpful and the Shred Armor did way more damage to actually kill enemies faster. So this is sort of the other thing you can go with. The Cinder Song. If you don't have the Mad Alchemist Ladle and you have the Cinder Song, do that. This is sort of your replacement you can work with in, in the weapons department. 
Now the offhand, this is the best one. If you have this, go for this unique. If you don't have it, put attunement on your offhand and cast speed if you can, or fire damage, or uh, spell crit, or even intelligence. Attunement scales your damage. Intelligence gives you more ward. And cast speed, I believe, right? Um, intelligence gives you... No, and improved skills that rely on carefully studied magic, okay. But the vault retention is the great thing. So intelligence is also great to make us even tankier. And this is insane. There's a key thing though, there's one that exists with fire. Um, let me check, I have it here. In the offhand, this one. You, you can see it in the, the globes that are on them, this one has a fire one, this one doesn't. Right? The fire one is bad because what does it actually say in this all this all this text? Right, I'm gonna explain it to you simply. It says down here, casting a cold spell grants cold infusion. What this does is, per stack you gain 10% more cold damage, but 6% less fire damage. So it plays around with the the elements, lightning, um, fire, and cold. These three, pretty much, because there are three versions of this. And the fire one means. Fire Infusion grants a stack every second, that's fine. But reaching 10 stacks, you grant 80% less fire damage. This is why it's the scales of Eterra. It's balancing things out on Earth. That's the idea of this item. A divine instrument, right? But if you have to fire one, it reduces your fire damage a lot. This one reduces cold damage and lightning damage. We don't give a fuck. But it gives us every other buffs, especially the attunement, the intelligence. Resistance is also in spell crit. So this is insane. If you don't have that, fire damage, you can also go with this. You might have this one, Igneval's head, also intelligence, fire damage, fire aura. This is also not bad, but this definitely does more damage. Now, things you should also have, this one you should also have, by the way. The soul fire, I think, is not that rare. It gives 60% uh, increased fire damage if you have killed an enemy recently. That's nice, except for bosses, of course. So... This build is very great to farm mobs. Against bosses, it's not bad, but it takes a while. Because you lack a lot of damage against the boss. But you don't die to it. If you just keep right-clicking. You just keep right-clicking, you just hold the button down, you don't do anything else, you don't care, you just drink something on the side. It doesn't matter, right? That, that's what you do with the build. If you don't have this, again, same thing as always. Fire damage, intelligence, attunement. This is, you just use your scaling tags, it's very simple. Fiery Dragon Shoes, you likely don't have either. I think this is pretty rare. Uh, fire damage, also movement speed, fire penetration with Ignite is pretty great. And the great thing I like about this is 80% reduced bonus damage taken from crits. That's pretty awesome. Belt, simple fire damage, mana region. You don't even need mana region because healing hands is also free on mana. Another thing that makes it broken. Health, you get the idea. This one is also just fire damage, health, health. Easy. This one is interesting, Hand of Judgment. I think most should have this. The key thing you really only want from this is the 16 attunement. It's the only thing you care about, because that scales your damage on the Divine Bolt, right? Just attunement. Everything else is irrelevant. <laughs> it's just this one ethics, but 16 attunement is very strong. That's why this is so powerful. These rings, Ashes of Mortality, you get these from the Soulfire Bastion dungeon if you kill the Fire Lich for Moses, is it Cremorus or for Moses? I think it's Cremorus, right? I don't know. At least at tier 3, I believe. You have to be tier 2 or tier 3 dungeon, then these drop at all from him. These are insane. Vault retention, fire damage, cast speed, even more fire damage, and 2 ward per ignite and damned on the target. This is just, just, just awesome. This is exactly what we need. Uh, ring wise there is also an immolator's oblation belt from that drops from the same sofa bastion guy at the end uh, this is even better than this one because it also gives you vault i believe but you have to run it tier four i think and then you have to have the luck on dropping it so yeah these are all uniques if you have them throw them all in then this can go to 2k corruption if you want to but if you don't have them just go for attunement skills the divine bolt the best Fire damage helps you a lot also with scaling or spell damage. Or if you want to be even tankier, go with healing effectiveness. Even though we do this with the idols, which we go to now. The idols, see, are all healing effectiveness. Look at this. 
60% healing effectiveness, damage over time is irrelevant. It's a cool buff of Ignite, but it's not really necessary. 80% healing effectiveness. 60% healing effectiveness. Healing effectiveness. Healing effectiveness. Healing effectiveness. Healing effectiveness. That just makes you tanky. Healing effectiveness makes you tankier. This is a funny addition, Front of Ambition, if you have that. 2% um, more fire damage per stack of Ambition. And you gain a stack of Ambition when you hit a boss or an enemy. So this is sort of the, the neat little gimmick that makes this build better against bosses. If you don't have this, you, you really lack damage against bosses a little bit. So if you have it, definitely use it. But it's not necessary. Not necessity. If you don't have it, just throw more healing effectiveness in there. Very simple. Yeah, that's it for the entire build. As I said, very easy to play. This can go to 2k corruption easily. You've seen it everywhere on YouTube. It will get nerfed. I'm 100% certain that it will be changed because it isn't working intentionally or as intended. But most likely not before cycle 1.1, so two more months-ish by the time... Eh, one to two months by the time this video goes out. So use it now while you can uh, because it is insane and it shreds. And like this, the Echo I was playing earlier wasn't empowered with 100 corruption. And as you could tell, it was super easy to do. I didn't even realize I killed the end boss of the Echo. So this build is just, just insane. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. And uh, if you have any different ideas for it or what you would change. And I will see you in the next video or on stream. Until then, have a good time.